Live from New Bedford, ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of authenticity, inspiration, and realness. Also, of good times, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now, here's your host of the show. He is Big Beefy E. He is Mr. Shenanigans and the elder statesman of the Rant and Raid podcast, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode 1135 of the show. And this is the um, second uh, episode of AEW Dynamite of 2024. We'll give you second, um, I should say, episode AEW Dynamite Event Center 2024. And uh, it's Homecoming 2024, part one. As you know, part two will be on Friday at Rampage. But uh, before we get to the uh, AEW uh, Event Center reports, I'm very happy to announce that I'm going to try to give a different intro for every segment that I'm doing on the show. Like I do a, um, a different intro, and it'll be starting next week, by the way. Like a different intro for Martin, uh, for I do Martindale Monday. You're going to see um, the thumbnails that you, you currently see as an intro. Can't wait to see you guys. Um, I'm, going to do, I'm doing a little something different for the year 2024. I figured because of all the craziness during the holidays and all that, I wasn't able to get everything done in one fell swoop, and I'm doing so. And uh, and with my job being high and demanding sometimes when it comes to snow removal, um, there might be a pretty good chance I might have to schedule some videos and then put them on on, on the exact same date. But it looks like I'm home, but I'm not. So, But the good news is getting out of 10 makes, makes it a little bit easier for me as far as that is concerned. It all depends on how, how you know, what starts where and all that good stuff. New England's a weird weather day. We have weird weather in New England. We found out that it's going to be near 60 degrees on Saturday. So it's going to be crazy, to say the least, man. So, so, but anyways, there'll be new, intro, in, in new different intros for all the segments that I do. And when I do a regular video, you're going to hear the regular intros that you're just currently seeing right now. I can't wait for um, you guys to see... The intros, it'll start next week. I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really probably starting this Saturday, uh, starting this Saturday probably. So, um, totally excited. So, let's get right to it. AEW Dynamite Homecoming at Daly's Place. Been in their home base for a long time, especially during the pandemic. Um, Hangman Adam Page went up against uh, Claudio Castagnoli. This, is a, this was a great, great fight. And, uh, and a great matchup all the way. Couldn't have gone either way, but Hangman Adam Page won. Down the first eight man tag match, um, or, on internet uh, once team or, international champion Orange Cassidy teams up with uh, Preston Vance of LFI, uh, Dustin Rhodes and Adam Copeland, and uh, Preston Vance decided to pay tribute to Brody at Daly's place and uh, Brody Lee, and uh, in fact he got the pin for his team on Lance Archer, so. Lance Ar and they went up against Lance Archer, Brian Cage, and the Gates of Agony, which um, Preston Vance picked up the victory for his team of Orange Cassidy, Adam Copeland, and Dustin Rhodes. Rene Paquette interviews the Bullet Club Gold. They were thinking about getting gold, a, ta a trio was gold. The acclaim interrupts, and then again, again, uh, Anthony Bowen says, hey, we got to work together against the Undisputed Kingdom. So, oh, we'll think about it. And we well, give us some time to think about it. Then Samoa Joe addresses the Daily's Place crowd in Jacksonville and says, like, this is the new, uh, you know, a new thing. If you're going to challenge me, you know, want to hear any sob stories or anything like that. And um, if you go to the committee, if you, I think you're worthy, then you're worthy. The Mogul Embassy interrupts Samoa Joe. Swerve Strickland challenges Joe for the AEW, women, uh, for the AEW World Championship. But then Hangman Adam Page came back to interrupt both men, starts getting into Swerve's face, addressing him, then Samoa Joe. And then as Swerve walks away, Hangman Adam Page kind of looks at him and he, walk, and he walks away. Then Hook, who issued a challenge to Samoa Joe, calls him out, gets into Samoa Joe's face, they're starting to judge Jack, and all of a sudden Hook goes one week. And next week, Samoa Joe will defend the world title against Hook. That's going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least. And then Renee Paquette interviewed the lovely, the gorgeous, timeless Tony Storm, who is 
getting, you know, she's like, she's like um, AEW's answer to our truth basically. But the difference is she can fight. And not only that, she's currently holding a championship, which is great. And then, and then Renee Puckett asked about uh, the new assignee, and she always said Wendy Richter. That would be hilarious if Wendy Richter actually showing up. That would be, be hilarious. Anyways, but no, uh, Deanna Perrazzo, uh, you know, she must be Italian. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And then he goes, Luther, can we get this uh, meeting with uh, Donna Palazzo? What? <laughs> she, Tony Storm's hilarious. And then she goes, and she goes, sit up, tits out, and then what's the, what's the line? Watch for the shoe. Here, have a chocolate. You just stepped in my line. I'm like, poor Mariah. I was like, Mariah May. I was like, oh boy. It was hilarious. Anyways, uh, Sammy Guevara went one on one with Ricky Starks, and Sammy Guevara did win the matchup. And then when Guevara was talking to Starks, did both men shake hands? But it was uh, a setup by Ricky Starks because Big Bill attacked Sammy Guevara, and then Chris Jericho comes and evens things up. While er while both teams were brawling all over the place in Daly's place and prepared that street fight this Saturday at Collision, uh, fans are singing the Judas theme song. Only Chris Jericho, man. Only Chris Jericho can do that. And then we have another eight-person tag, and this time the ladies get involved, and one team, Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander, Thunder Rosa, and Anna J. to go up against the outcast, with you know, Soraya and Ruby Soho, with the lovely Harley Cameron, and ringside, along with Sky Blue, and T current TBS champ, Julia Hart. And yeah, Stokely's trying to uh, flirt with Chris Statlander, and Chris Statlander thinks he's out of his mind. Stokely is out of his mind. Trust me on that one. But uh, Anna J picked up the victory, making Sky Blue submit with the Queen Slayer. That means Thunder Rosa, Statlander, and Will Nightingale also pick up the victory with her. And there's a couple of times Harley Cameron got involved in the matchup. She is a mess. Watch out for Harley Cameron, though. Then... Uh, Willa Yuta addresses Eddie Kingston. In fact, Willa Yuta is challenging Eddie Kingston for the Continental Crown Championship, I believe, this coming Friday. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Then you got... Um, then you got the Undisputed Kingdom coming out. And Brian Keith went one-on-one -on -one with Roderick Strong. Is it me or does Roderick Strong, even with the glasses or no glasses, look like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons? I'm telling you. Anyways, Strong did pick up the victory. Adam Cole dressed the Daily's Place crowd says, "Get used to get used to us. We'll be here for a long time." Looks like they want to be at the top of AEW. Jim Ross, uh, actually, don't not yet. Um, uh, Renee Paquette interviewed Diana Perrazzo, and then she goes, "Have her people call my people, and we'll get something together." Because I, and she'll be making her debut on Collision this Friday. And so Red Velvet, who's making her return, will make her collision debut as well. And it seems like uh, she challenged Perazzo to a match. So, so Deanna Perazzo will make her collision uh, in-ring debut on collision this coming uh, Saturday night against Red Velvet. Stir it up. Then Jim Ross joins the commentary for the uh, main event match, which is a tornado tag. Sting and Darby Allen versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Konosuke Takeshita of the... Don Callis family with uh, Kyle Fletcher, the Ring of Honor television champion. And this was a heck of a matchup. And Sting, oh my god, again. Again, he, he, it was off one of those scaffolding things. Uh, on one of those uh, state step, stage steps um, where the crowd was at. A Daly's Place and f dropped Powerhouse Hobbs. Scorpion Death dropped him through a table. One, two, three. Sting and he won. His, you know, he won the match for his team, but then, but but then uh, Tony Schiavone got an interview with Sting on the microphone. He says, and he asked Sting this question: "Hey Sting, who will be your final opponent for AEW Revolution March the third? And a team that we have not seen in a while, the Young Bucks, came out and kind of st stared at um, Darby Allen and Sting." In the ring, and Darby Allen's like, "Come on, we're going." This thing's like trying to calm down Darby Allen, something like that, and looks like Darby Allen was cool with it. So, while Sting and Darby Allen were taking it all in at Daily's place, as you know, it will be Sting, uh, Sting's final match. This was Sting's final match at Daily's place, so this was a crazy, crazy thing. So, are the Young Bucks 
part of Sting's final match? We'll find we'll find out the story behind that situation because the Young Bucks didn't say anything. They just stand there and just stared at Sting. So, yep, it is a crazy, crazy deal. So, um, t- uh, tomorrow will be um, uh, Network Throwdown Thursday and also uh, TNA Wrestling for the very first time. In fact, TNA Wrestling, they've been getting all new championship belts for all the men so far. The ladies still have yet to have championships. And there's a rumor going around that Trinity may go be back, maybe going back, Maybe going back to the WWE with well, that situation, what will, will that mean for the Heart of Kill pay per view where she is defending her title against Jordan Grace? So, this is an interesting situation to say the least. And, uh, oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, it's, it's going to be an interesting situation for sure. So, what's going to happen? Who knows for sure. Now we got my network throwdown down Thursday with pressure luck. I better get back on the right track. It will be the second time playing it in 2024. We got TNA Wrestling. But in, in between all that, you got Rant and Rave tomorrow night, Thursday. And um, can't wait to see what we have in store for you guys. And also, bigger news, the award show that was supposed to be slated for the 15th. Uh, because uh, David uh, St. Dennis, a.k.a. David 3000, has something planned during that week. They decided to move it to the Friday night, the 26th at 8 p.m. So I'm kind of looking forward to what is the store. For, remember, I'm a 20-time nominee for these Chilling 3000 Awards. Um, that will uh, the Voting will be ending the 22nd, so get your votes in. All right? So that's all the time we have on this show. I will see bid you guys adieu. Goodbye for now. And... Um, well, like I said, next week we'll start the new intros for the many different uh, segments that I do. Uh, I'll probably get probably get going once I uh, with with the rest of them tomorrow and setting them up and everything else. But starting next week, the new intros will be coming in each for each of the segments that I do. Really excited, looking forward to it. So that's all the time we have on the show. Until the next episode comes rolling around, Mister Announcer, take us home, please, sir. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, door for Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Bofa Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.